the management of women with red cell antibodies during pregnancy. Green Dap Guideline Number 65, May 2014. Introduction and Background Epidemiology The presence of maternal red cell antibodies during pregnancy is a relatively common findings and requires close collaboration between the blood transfusion laboratory, obstetric, and neonatal care providers. The presence of red cell antibodies signifies alloimmunization that has occurred as a result of previous pregnancy, transfusion, or transplantation. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn, or HDFN, is a condition in which transplacental passage of maternal immunoglobulin G, or IgG antibodies, results in immune hemolysis of fetal or neonatal red cells. Some antibodies, including anti-D, anti-Cal, and anti-C, confer significant fetal and neonatal risk such as anemia requiring intrauterine or neonatal transfusion, jaundice, or perinatal loss. Anti-D is the most commonly encountered antibody during pregnancy. Before routine antenatal anti-D prophylaxis, late immunization during a first pregnancy was responsible for 18 to 27 percent of cases. Pre-pregnancy counseling. Is pre-pregnancy counseling necessary for women known to have red cell antibodies prior to pregnancy? Women with red cell antibodies, particularly if there is a risk of fetal anemia, or if compatible donor red cells for transfusion may be difficult to obtain, should attend for pre-pregnancy counseling with a clinician with knowledge and expertise of this condition. Assisted Reproductive Techniques or ART Do Assisted Reproductive Techniques or ART increase the risk of red cell antibodies developing? There is no evidence that assisted reproductive techniques, or ART, increases the risk of red cell alloimmunization. However, if donor eggs are used for a mother with an alloantibody and the donor red cell antigen status is not known, fetal genotyping may be required. Red cell antibodies in pregnancy In a population study, the prevalence of positive antibody screens was 1 is to 80 with a 1 is to 300 prevalence of clinically significant alloantibodies other than anti-D. Previous blood transfusion is an important cause for alloimmunization with antibodies other than anti-D implicated in hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. What red cell antibodies are clinically significant, maternal and fetal, during pregnancy? All women should have their blood group and antibody status determined at booking and at 28 weeks of gestation. Antibodies to many of the red cell antigens have the potential to be clinically significant and will have implications for the selection of blood for transfusion in the mother to avoid the risk of hemolytic transfusion reactions. For this reason, the blood group and the antibody status of the mother should be tested at booking and at 28 weeks of gestation. In addition to the risk of fetal anemia, the presence of maternal red cell antibodies can hinder the timely provision of blood and blood components because of difficulty in obtaining antigen-negative blood and or cross-matching issues. The risk of fetal anemia is greatest with anti-D, anti-C, and anti-K antibodies. What are the implications for the fetus and neonate from red cell antibodies? Clinicians should be aware that severe fetal anemia can result in high drops, which significantly worsens the perinatal outcome. Fetal anemia, hyperbilirubinemia, and neonatal jaundice can result from red cell antibodies that cause hemolysis or impaired erythropoiesis in utero. Untreated, severe fetal anemia can result in high drops, preterm birth, or perinatal death. 
to overall perinatal survival in pregnancies complicated by red cell antibodies causing fetal anemia following treatment was reported to be 84%, with non-hydropic fetuses having better survival, 94%, than hydropic fetuses, 74%. Anti-K causes anemia secondary to erythroid suppression and immune destruction of early erythroid progenitor cells, but hyperbilirubinemia is not a prominent feature. Severe fetal anemia can occur even at relatively low antibody titers. When and how should paternal and fetal genotyping be performed? Non-invasive fetal genotyping using maternal blood is now possible for D, C, C, E, E, and K antigens. These should be performed in the first instance for the relevant antigen when maternal red cell antibodies are present. For other antigens, invasive testing such as chorionic villus sampling or CVS or amniocentesis may be considered if fetal anemia is a concern or if invasive testing is performed for another reason, for example, karyotyping. Where clinically significant maternal red cell antibodies are detected, the paternal phenotype can be ascertained by serology. However, with the RISUS-D or RHD antigen specifically, in an antigen-positive father, while a likely phenotype can be deduced, genotyping is required to determine whether he is homozygous or heterozygous for the RHD gene. If the father is homozygous for the red cell antigen, then all pregnancies are potentially at risk. It is also reasonable to omit paternal testing and proceed directly to fetal genotyping to avoid issues of non-paternity. Genotyping can be undertaken from 16 weeks of gestation for all, except K, which can be undertaken from 20 weeks, due to the risk of a false negative result if performed earlier in pregnancy. However, in some cases, results are inconclusive as it is not possible to confirm that fetal DNA as well as maternal DNA is present in the sample. In these cases, consideration may need to be given to repeating the non-invasive test, performing an amniocentesis, or managing the pregnancy as one that is at risk. It is also reasonable not to perform fetal genotyping until the antibody reaches a level that would warrant fetal middle cerebral artery or MCA Doppler monitoring. Of note, in dizygotic twins, a maternal blood test for fetal genotyping will not differentiate between the twins, just that at least one has the corresponding gene. If fetal monitoring for anemia is indicated, each twin would need to be monitored separately. Non-invasive genotyping is not possible for some red cell antigens. In these cases, invasive testing, chorionic villus sampling or CVS, or amniocentesis may be considered. However, the risks of the procedure, miscarriage, worsening of alloimmunization need to be balanced against the benefit that knowledge of the fetal genotype brings to the management of the pregnancy. It would normally only be indicated if there was a history of a significant problem with HDFN or hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn or MCA Doppler ultrasound suggested developing fetal anemia and intrauterine transfusion or IUT was being considered. Is karyotyping contraindicated in the presence of maternal red cell antibodies? Invasive testing is not contraindicated if alloimmunization has occurred. Antidiprophylaxis should be given to cover invasive testing if the mother is RHD negative and is not sensitized. If the fetus is at risk of anemia, 
When should referral to a fetal medicine specialist take place? Referral to a fetal medicine specialist should occur when there are rising antibody levels or titers, a level or titer above a specific threshold, or ultrasound features suggestive of fetal anemia. Referral should take place if there is a history of unexplained severe neonatal jaundice, neonatal anemia requiring transfusion or exchange transfusion in order to exclude hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn as the cause. For antibodies other than anti-D, anti-C, and anti-K, the following should prompt referral to a fetal medicine specialist. A history of previous significant HDFN or hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn or IUT or intrauterine transfusion or a titer of 32 or above, especially if the titer is rising as rising titers correlate with increasing risk and severity of anemia.